Peace and blessings to the 12 tribes of Israel. Today I'm going to deal with a Bible share called Purge Out the Rebels. Purge Out the Rebels. Right, so it's not going to be a long-winded Bible share. It's going to be a short Bible share. Hopefully you'll be able to gain something from what I'm saying. You know, it might be here and there. It might be the whole thing right i'm just going to give you a series of scriptures hopefully bring some edification hopefully you'll you'll understand a scripture or two or you know even if it's something that you know then it, it helps to solidify it and in in and in that way it, it helps to edify you the same way as if you didn't know it right okay so let's go to ezekiel 20 and we're going to read from 33 to 38 Here, ready, go. As I live, said the Lord God, surely will with a mighty hand and with a stretched out arm and with fury poured out, will I rule over you. And I will bring you out from the people and will gather you out of the countries wherein ye are scattered with a mighty hand and with a stretched out arm and with fury poured out. So the most high, to just talking about a prophecy that's not happened yet. Because obviously we're still scattered all over the world. Christ hasn't returned and we haven't moved out of all of these countries of which we are scattered. And we're not in our homeland yet. Right. That's Israel, by the way. Israel. So let's read 33 again. As I live, said the Lord God, surely with a mighty hand, with a stretched out arm and with fury poured out, will I rule over you. Right. And I will bring you out from the people. So he's talking about in terms of the curses. Right. The full the full, uh, uh, the full extent of the curses shall come upon Israel. So that's slavery and a colonialism. And I will bring you out from the people and I will gather you out of the countries wherein ye are scattered. That's when Christ returns with a mighty hand and with a, a stretched out arm with the chariots and fury poured out. So he, so there's going to be a lot of, uh, vent, there's going to be a lot of vengeance on that day when, when Israel is saved, right? A lot of wars going on. A lot of the World War Three bombs flying all over the place, missiles, all sorts of stuff. Thirty five. And I will bring you into the wilderness and I will bring you into the wilderness of the people. And there will I plead with you face to face. Right. Plead goes into something which is not <laughs> not nice. <laughs> right. Plead just goes into the most high being angry. Right. Uh, like as I pleaded with your fathers in the wilderness of the land of Egypt, so will I plead with you, said the Lord God, and I will cause you to pass under the rod. Right. So, so the Lord says, I'm going to cause you to pass under the rod and I will bring you into the bond of the covenant. He's going to bring us into the bond of the covenant and I will purge out from among you the rebels. So I suppose the bond of the covenant goes into the new covenant, right? And I will purge out from among you the rebels because it says semicolon and then it goes and I will purge out from among you the rebels and them that trespass against me. I will bring them forth out of the country where they sojourned. Right. So out of the country of where they sojourned and they shall not enter into the land of Israel. And ye shall know that I am the Lord and they shall not enter into the land of Israel and they shall know that I am the Lord. Right. So let's read 38 again. And I will purge out from among you the rebels and them that transgress against me. And I will bring them forth out of the country where they sojourn and they shall not enter the land of Israel. And ye shall know that I am the Lord. So he's not going to bring them into the land of Israel. Right. So so basically he said he's going to purge out the rebels. So it goes into Israel that don't believe, that don't accept that Christ uh, and, and don't believe in Christ, who he is, what he came to do and what we're supposed to do as a result of him dying on the tree. Right. So. So it's so he's saying that those that are purged will not go into the land of Israel. Israel, right? So we not, they will not enter into the land of Israel and ye shall know that I am the Lord. And the Lord is saying, yeah, that's me. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to separate them, but they ain't going to go in. 
They're not going home. <laughs> right? Okay, so let's go to the first Corinthians. So we're reading first Corinthians five and we're going to read from four to eight. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, when ye are gathered together and my spirit with the power of our Lord Jesus Christ to deliver such all one unto Satan for the destruction of the flesh that the spirit may be saved in the day of the Lord Jesus. Your glory, glorying is not good. Know ye not that a little leaven leavened the whole lump. So a little yeast, because leaven goes into yeast, goes into yeast. A little leaven leavened the whole lump. It, it causes the lump to rise. So it causes the bread or cake to rise. Purge out therefore the old leaven. So it's saying purge out the old leaven. It goes into the Old Testament. That ye may be a new lump. That ye may be new in Christ. And ye are unleavened. For, e for even Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Right? So it's saying... Christ has been sacrificed for us. Christ became the Passover. He became the Passover lamb, right? Uh, so let's read on to eight. Therefore, let us keep the feast, not when, with the old leaven. We're not going to keep it with the old leaven, the old covenant, neither with the leaven of malice and wickedness, not with malice and wickedness as we did in the Old Testament, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. So it's now been switched to... Uh, the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth, right? So, so instead of having a feast, now we're under the sincerity and truth, right? So let's read from seven again. Purge out therefore the old leaven. So you just like you're going to purge out the leaven, the rebels. The rebels goes into those that still want to be under Moses. Follow the old covenant. Purge therefore the old leaven that ye may be new lumps so that you can accept the new covenant as ye were unleavened as you didn't know anything, right? <laughs> for even for even Christ our Passover, so even Christ who is our Passover is sacrificed for us. He died on the cross. He became the ultimate Passover lamb and he sacrificed his whole body for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Let us keep the feast. Not with an old leaven. So we're not going to do it the old fashioned way. Not with where you had to, you know, there's things that you need to bring. The ceremonial law you need to be eating. Be at a certain place. Be in Jerusalem. All that stuff. Not with an old leaven. Neither with the leaven of malice. So neither with all the malice and wickedness that went with all of that. People were still were doing the laws of Moses when they should have been doing it. But they were doing it with wickedness and malice. Right? They were doing it just for doing it, right? But they didn't really do it out of love, right? But with the unleavened bread of sincerity. But we're now going to do, it's not saying that you should go back and do the feast again, the Passover again. He's not saying that. All it's saying is you're going to replace it with sincerity and truth. So truth goes into what we're supposed to be doing in the new covenant. Right. So sincerity goes into now you're not following the old way of doing things. You're now going to follow the new way of doing things, which is the truth. And you're now going to do it from your heart. You're, good, you're not going to be following the old feast days and all that. Right. You're just going to do whatever you do towards Christ and the most high. You're going to do it with the sincerity and truth. You're going to follow the laws as Christ commanded you to do them. Right. So let's now go to Galatians 5, reading from 1 to 14. So we're reading Galatians 5, and we're going to read from 1 to 14. Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty wherewith Christ hath made us free, and be in, not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. So don't be entangled again with the, the yoke of bondage of the old leaven or the old covenant. Behold, I, Paul, say unto you that if you be circumcised, if you be circumcised, Christ shall profit you nothing. Christ shall profit you nothing. Circumcise in the flesh. That's what he's talking about. Because in the old covenant, you had to circumcise in the flesh. It was is a continuation of the circumcision, right? For I testify again to every man. So, so in the Old Testament, you had to circumcise your babies. But in the New Testament, you don't have to. The boy babies had to circumcise. The men had to be circumcised. But not in the New Testament, right? That's that's what I mean to say. 
But behold, I, Paul, say unto you that if you be circumcised, Christ shall profit you nothing. For I testify again to every man that is circumcised that he is a debtor to do the whole law. So if you circumcise yourself, right, in the new covenant, you're still circumcising yourself as to obey the old covenant. You have to do the whole law. It means that you can't just do one. Say you're following the laws of Moses. You have to do all of the law, right? Christ has become of no effect unto you. It means that Christ has become in no effect of you because you're still circumcising in the flesh. Whosoever of you are justified by the law, if you're justified by the laws of Moses, ye are fallen from grace. Then there's no grace for you because grace is where the Lord is revealing himself to you. He's, he's having a relationship with you. And that relationship is via Christ. It's not via Moses, but via Christ. Right. It's a new relationship via mercy, his mercy for Israel. Right. He's given you grace to understand the scriptures, his grace to be sent a prophet to tell you the truth. Right. So Christ has become of no effect unto you. Who, whosoever of you are justified by the law, you're justified by the law of Moses. Ye are fallen from grace. If you want to go back and circumcise yourself in the flesh and do the whole law of Moses, it means that you, you don't care about the most high. It means that grace is not abounding you. But we, through the Spirit, wait for the hope of righteousness by faith. So we, through the Spirit, through the Holy Spirit, wait for the hope of righteousness by faith. We have faith. <laughs> right? We have faith. That the Holy Spirit will show us all the things that we need, that it needs to show us. We have faith in Christ, our Messiah, our Savior. Carry on to six. For in Christ Jesus, neither circumcision availeth anything nor uncircumcision. Neither circumcision so or uncircumcision. So now it's going into neither circumcision let's read again but in jesus christ neither circumcision availeth anything nor uncircumcision but faith which worketh by love so whether you're circumcising the flesh or not circumcising the flesh right it doesn't mean anything but faith which worketh by love that's what means something right so whether you you have been circumcised in the flesh because in order to follow the law to follow the law of moses a man had to be circumcised Right, he had to be circumcised, otherwise, he would not be following the laws of Moses fully. Right? So we saying, for in Christ Jesus, neither circumcision, whether you're circumcised in the flesh, avail it anything, nor uncircumcision, whether you're circumcised or not circumcised, but faith would work it in you. Ye did run well, who did hinder you that ye shall not obey the truth? This persuasion cometh not of him that call it you. A little leaven, this is the bit I wanted to get to. A little leaven, leaven is yeast, leaven the whole lump, right? It, it makes, it caused the cake or the bread to rise. I have confidence in you through the Lord that ye will be none otherwise minded, but he that troubled you shall bear his judgment, whosoever he be. And I, brethren, if I yet preach circumcision, so if I preach circumcision, laws of Moses, why do I yet suffer persecution? Right? Why are you persecuting me? Because I'm preaching just like you. Then is the offense of the cross ceased. Right? So, it, it, so what he's saying is that it means that if I'm speaking what you, if, if I'm speaking something that you're speaking, right? It means why are you persecuting me? Right? Let's read again. And I, brethren, if I yet preach circumcision, so if you preach the laws of Moses, why do I yet suffer persecution so he's asking the question why are you persecuting me is it because i don't preach it and i speak about christ then is the offense of the cross sea so he's saying then what i'm preaching obviously is very offensive right it means that i'm speaking um it offends you because i'm going against what you teach i would they were even cut off which trouble you 13 for the brethren ye have being called unto liberty so you've been called unto liberty you have the liberty to not do the laws or the laws of moses only use not liberty for an occasion to, to the flesh don't use your liberty that you've been given as as occasion to sin to say ah oh, now we don't have to do all those laws now 
we don't have a contract to follow all those laws so that means i can sin as much as i want because now i can just go to god and say forgive me and then the following day i'll do it again and again and again and again and again in fact i can do about 10 20 sins because nothing is going to happen because i'm under grace <laughs> For brethren, you have been called unto liberty. You've been called unto liberty. Only use not liberty for an occasion to the flesh. Don't use it for sin. Carnal sin. Don't get prideful now. But by love, serve one another. You're supposed to serve one another in love. Right? Because love is what annexes the new covenant. Because in the old covenant, our spirit was all over the place. Israel's spirit was all over the place. But in the new covenant, the Most High now... Make, brings breaks it down to love he works on your spirit getting your spirit right so that you can follow christ's commandments uh, for all the law is fulfilled in one word even this thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself is fulfilled in love you must love your neighbor as yourself and you must love the lord with all of your mind all of your strength all of your soul 15 but if you bite and devour one another take heed that ye be not consumed of one another right so you got to be careful if you keep having disagreements you keep you know sinning you know you keep hanging out people that do wicked things then it's going to rub off on you let's read it again but if you bite and devour one another let he that ye be not consumed of one another so so be careful not to sin right if you hang out with people that want to cuss and carry on you know, people that want to, you know, who hate each other, who don't like each other and just want to continue that hatred going. You've got to be very, very careful with that. Thus, I say then, walk in the spirit. Ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. So you've got to walk in the, in the spirit so that you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Right. I should have stopped at 14. Right. OK. I carried on a bit. So, yeah. So that's the end of that one. Let's go to Romans 10. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth that the Lord Jesus and shall believe in thine heart that God had raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. So you've got to confess, right, that you confess that you believe in Jesus and you believe that he that that you believe that God raised him from the dead and thou shalt be saved. Right. So it's saying that that's a belief that you must have. It's not saying that's the only belief you have. You close your eyes and that's the only belief you have. No. Because how do you understand the Bible? You understand the Bible in precepts, right? I'm going to go there very soon, but let's carry on. For with the heart man believe it unto righteousness, and with the mouth man confess it made unto salvation. So you've got to at least say something. You're not just, you not think it in your heart. You've got to say it, right? In the abundance of, of the heart, the mouth speaks. You know, it's very important that you speak it. For the scriptures say it. For the scriptures say, whosoever believe on him shall not be ashamed. If you believe on Christ, you won't be ashamed. If you believe in God, you won't be ashamed. For there is a there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek. So people get really crazy when it comes to this scripture. They say, oh, well, it, it goes into all nations. It's neither Jew or any of the nations. We're all one in Christ. All nations now have not been accepted in the body of Christ. No, Christ only came for the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Only Israel. The prophecy was that Israel would get back together in one body and one stick as one nation again. And that's what Christ came to do. For there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek. So it's going into those that were Jews and those that were uh, trapped in, in Greek customs or raised up in Greek customs. Right. Or were alien to the Jews because the Jews was the southern kingdom. But the Greeks... The Greeks, I suppose you can separate the Greeks as being the northern kingdom, right? I suppose it's a way of separating people, isn't it? You know, because like you can call someone who's an Israelite, oh, he's from the West Indies, right? But he was born in Britain. He spent his whole entire life in Britain, right? So he's also British. So it, it, it's that kind of thing, right? For the same Lord over all is rich, unto all that call upon him he's saying that all israelites are one right but whosoever uh how do we know it's israelite israelites because god is god of the israelites he's god of abraham isaac and jacob israel no one else god of israel because that's his children right that's he perceives israel as being his children right his first 
uh, nation of people, the apple of his eye, right? So let's read 12 again. For there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek, it's, it's Israelites, for the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. But it's, it's talking about Israel. It's not talking about all nations. It's going to say it here. How then shall they call on him on whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without the preacher? So it's going into preachers, right? But uh, whosoever goes into Israel, really, right? I'm not going to go to the precept. But let's go down to 15. And how shall they preach except they be sent? Right. So a preacher needs to go. A prophet needs to go. And they need to teach the people. As it is written. How beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace. Preaching the gospel of peace. And bring glad tidings of good things. So it's the good news. The good news is we're no longer under the laws of Moses. We don't have to follow all 613 laws anymore. We're now Christ came and fulfilled the law. So whatever Christ said to do is what we do. But we can also use, we can also go into the law because Christ didn't come to destroy the law. He didn't come to destroy the laws of Moses. We can still go into the law and, and we can actually use the laws as a means of righteousness, right? It's called the righteousness of the law, right? So if Christ says something in the New Testament and he didn't really expand on it, then we can go into the, the Old Testament and then we can see what it was, right? And then we can uphold that righteousness, right? But we don't have a contract to follow all the laws of Moses that's what we don't have and that's the good news is that those have been taken away now we're under grace now we have a, a, a relationship now we can relate more with the most high now that those those the partition <laughs> that veil has been taken away <laughs> right and now we have this this clean road to the most high via Christ right so let's move on let's go now to John we're going to go to John 7 so we're reading John 7 and we're going to read more on the Pharisees and about Christ's uh, preaching. Right. So we're reading John 7 and we're going to read from 28 to 40. Here, ready, go. And cried Jesus in the temple as he taught, saying, Yea, both know me, and yea, know whence I am. I am not come of myself, but he that sent me is true, whom ye know not. So Christ was talking about the Most High. But I know him, for I am from him, and he hath sent me. So Most High sent Christ. Then thou sought to take him, but no man laid hands on him because his hour was not yet come. They didn't like what he was saying. That's the scribes and the Pharisees and anybody else that was there that rejected what he was saying. And many of the people believed on him and said, when Christ cometh, will he do more miracles than these, which this man hath done. Right. So they didn't believe that he was he was the Christ that was prophesied by the prophets in the Old Testament. Jeremiah, Isaiah, Ezekiel, etc., etc. The Pharisees heard that the people murmured such things concerning him and the Pharisees and the chief priests sent officers to take him, right? Officers to take him. So the Pharisees and the scribes were enemy to Christ, right? And they, they put up chief priests, Pharisees, and they were over the people and their job was to be a nuisance. Then said Jesus unto them, yet a little while am I with you and then I go unto him that sent me, right? Ye shall seek me and shall not find me, and where I am, till you cannot come. Then said the Jews among themselves. So he was speaking amongst the Jews. He, the, the Jews were like whispering to themselves, Whither will he go that he shall not find him? Will he go on to disperse among the Gentiles? Disperse goes into the northern kingdom, right? So the northern kingdom being the ten tribes. And teach the Gentiles. So he's going to go among the Gentiles, the real Gentiles, and teach the Gentile Israelites. What manner of saying is this that he said, Ye shall seek me and shall not find me, and where am I? Tither you, you cannot come. In the last day, the great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried, saying, If any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. He that believed on me, as the scripture's heart said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water, meaning understanding. But this spake he of the spirit, which they that believe on him should receive from the Holy Ghost was not yet given because Jesus was not yet glorified. So belly goes in from within. 40. 
Many of the people, therefore, when they heard this saying, said of, of a truth, this is the this is the prophet. So many of them believed, but the Pharisees and the scribes, they didn't like anybody to believe that, right? So let's read 39 again. But this spake he of the spirit, which they that believed on him should receive for the Holy Ghost was not yet given because Jesus was not yet glorified. So there was a new Holy Spirit that was supposed to be sent down by Christ in the name of, by Most High rather, in the name of Christ, right? So that Holy Spirit was supposed to be given when Christ was crucified and he died and he went up. That Holy Spirit came down, right? Many of the people, therefore, when they heard this saying, said of a truth, this is a prophet. They believed on him. They believed on him. So let's go to Romans 11. Let's go back to Romans. So now we're reading Romans 11. It says, we're still dealing with purge the, the rebels. I say, reading Romans 11, reading from 1 to 10. I say then, heart God, so this is Paul speaking, heart God cast away the people, God forbid, for I am an Israelite of the seed of Abraham of the tribe of Benjamin. So he was a Jew. From the southern kingdom. God had not cast away his people which he foreknew. What ye not what the scriptures say of Elias. I think that's Isaiah. How, how he make an intercession to God against Israel saying. Lord they have killed thy prophets and dig down thine altars. And I am left alone and they seek my life. But what, what say the answer of God unto him. I have reserved to myself 7,000 men who have not bow the knee to the image of Baal. So, so the Most High always reserves his people, right? Five, even so then at this present time, also there is a, a remnant, also there is a remnant according to the election of grace. So that's, so the, Paul is just saying, he's giving that analogy of what happened to Israel. There's going to be a remnant of Israelites, the election of grace. And if by grace, then is it no more of works? Otherwise, grace is no more grace. But if it be of works, there is no more grace. Otherwise, work is no more work. Right. So it's going in. If it's grace, right, grace is connected to mercy, right? The grace is a new relationship with the Most High. Him coming to you and saying, I want to have a relationship with you, right? That's his grace, his mercy that he's given you. It's connected to mercy, right? So if it is of grace... Right. Then it is of then it's no more of the works of the law. That's what it's going into. Right. You don't have to earn it by doing the laws of Moses to earn it. Right. It's a free gift. It's the Lord coming to you and saying, scratch everything that happened before. I now want to create a new relationship with you. That's the grace. So and if by grace, then it's no more of works. Otherwise, grace is no more grace. But if it be works, then it's no more grace. Otherwise, work is is no more work right so we're not under the works anymore we're under grace we're on the works of the law seven what then israel had not obtained that which he seek it for but the election had obtained it and the rest were blinded so the most high as i said before has a remnant that he deals with and the rest he blinds he's not taking everyone back home to Israel. He's not taking all Israelites to Israel. He said the rest Israelites were blinded. According as it was written, God had given them the spirit of slumber, eyes that they should not see and ears that they should not hear unto this day. And David said, let their table be made a snare and a trap and a stumbling block and recompense unto them. Right. So the table there is the Bible. How do we know that? Let's go to Isaiah 28 and we're going to read 13. So Isaiah 28 and we are reading 13. So this Bible, the reason why a lot of people can't understand it is because the Lord wrote the Bible, uh, a lot of the Bible, in, in code, right? Some people don't understand when I say code. They, they struggle with that word code. What do you mean code? <laughs> right? The Lord has a way of speaking, right? What he's saying, he didn't literally mean what he's saying, right? But... Uh, but he uses, you have to use the precepts in the Bible to de defy, decipher what the Lord is saying, right? The emphasis of what he's saying, because he uses words to substitute other words, right? So in that sense, it's coded, right? He uses metaphors, parables. He uses, that's how he speaks, right? A, a particular way of speaking, right? So Isaiah 28, 13. So we're dealing with snares and table. So, but the word of the Lord was unto them, precept upon precept. So that's how you understand the Bible. That's the word of God to understand the word of God. 
precept upon precept. So you, you go to one part of the Bible, you can't understand it. You go to another part where it explains it. Precept upon precept, precept upon precept, line upon line, line upon line. So like what I'm doing here, I'm going line upon line and explaining, right? I'm going line upon line. I'm trying my best, <laughs> right? <laughs> I don't know everything in the Bible, but I'm trying my best to explain it as much as I can. So I'm going from line to line in hope that you gain some edification, right? So it says line upon line, line upon line, hair a little. So there's a little bit here and then there's a little bit there. And uh, they're a little and they might go and fall backwards. So that's how you catch someone out. All right. So that's how you understand the Bible and be broken and snared and taken. So that's how the most high hides the Bible, because very often he would not give you the understanding. Even if you go to a precept, you still don't. You're still baffled as to how does that fit in? Right. <laughs> right. So he can blind you in that way. Right. Whereby you just don't understand it at all. It doesn't give you the spirit to read it in the first place, to read the Bible in the first place. <laughs> you, you, How many times have you as a Christian been in the church and you couldn't pick up the Bible? You couldn't read the Bible. Right. You I, that used to be me. I, I mean, when I just came into Christ. Right. You pick up the Bible and the Bible's like, oh, what's that? Oh, it's this. I don't even understand that. It doesn't even make any sense. It because you, because you're new in the faith, right? But the problem is is that people continue that throughout their whole uh, journey in Christ. So we're talking 10, 20, 30, 40, some people older than that. How many years they've been in Christ? They still cannot pick up the Bible and make head nor tail of it. They don't still can't even understand what I've just read here in Isaiah 28:13. Right. Still don't even get that. Right. So let's go back to Romans 11. So we're, we're now at. Uh, let's read from seven again. What then Israel heart not obtained that which he seek it for, but the election heart obtained it and the rest were blinded. So the Lord opens the Bible to the election. I know the Bible because obviously I've been chosen. The Lord has chosen me to show me the Bible because I've always had a fascination with knowing the truth in the Bible. Uh, the Lord put that spirit within me. And another brother. And another brother. And another sister. And another sister. That's how the Lord does his election of grace. Right? Uh, and the rest were blinded. So he blinds the eyes of those that don't care about the Most High. Those in the world that definitely don't care about the Most High. Those in the church, whether it be an Israelite or Christian church, that don't really care too much about the Bible. He blinds them, right? They, because their their lives are filled with sin. You know, they sin as a means of existence, right? So let's read eight. According as it is written, God had given them the spirit of slumber, meaning sleep. They can't see anything. Darkness. Eyes that they should not see. They can't see anything in the Bible. You explain something in the Bible and they can't see it. They cannot see it. Never can see it. <laughs> you can explain it a hundred times every day and they still cannot see it. Six months later, they're still asking you the same basic questions and still denying it, right? So I so they should see not they can't see it and airs that they should not hear that goes in one ear comes out the other. It, there's no resonant on their spirit though, because deep down inside, they don't care about the most high. These people do not care about the word of God and they go through their lives looking for a feel good in the Christian church. Make because they know it's, it's a way of feel it's their way of life it, It's feeling good. Making themselves feel good in the Christian church. They may be a singer. They may be an organ player. They may be a pastor. Whatever they call themselves. Whatever they do within the church service. They enjoy it. Because it gives them a sense of purpose. And it makes them feel good. Right? So let's read it again. According as it is written. God had given them the spirit of slumber. They have the spirit of slumber. Eyes that they should not see. Can't see anything. Heirs that they should not hear, doesn't matter how many times you explain, cannot see it, unto, unto this day, right? Nine, and David said, let their table, let their Bible be made a snare, be made a trap, and a trap, and a stumbling block. So the Bible was always a stumbling block, and then Christ became a huge stumbling block, and recompense unto them. 
10. Let their eyes be darkened. Let their eyes be darkened means they can't see, can't see the light that they may not see. The Lord deliberately deludes them into thinking whatever they want to think. And bow down their back always. So they're always at mercy of anything, right? So let their eyes be darkened. Let their eyes be darkened. They can't see. Let and, and that they may not see and bow down their back always, right? So let's read on to 11. And I say then, have they stumbled that they should fall? God forbid, but rather through their fall, salvation is come unto the Gentiles for to provoke them to jealousy. Okay, so this is going into the Jews, you know, some of the Jews, not all of the Jews, the Pharisees and the scribes are those who believed in the Pharisee with the Pharisees and the scribes were teaching those, right? So it goes into those people that the Lord has blinded, deluding them in, into thinking whatever they wanted to think. They were not chosen, right? So it's saying, because you listen to them, we're now going to go to the Gentiles, right? Right, so it's now been passed on to the northern kingdom as to provoke the Jews, right? Who were always in the law. To provoke them to jealousy. Because the Bible says he would raise the tents of Judah first. Before he raises the rest of the tribes. Right? So that's what that scripture is going into. But really what I wanted from that is the election of grace and a remnant. Right? So that's really what I wanted from that. Not all of Israel is going in. Right? Because the Lord is busy purging the rebels as we speak by deluding them into thinking whatever they want to think deluding them into into closing the bible so that they cannot understand anything whatsoever right so let's go to baruch and then we'll do micah micah 2 um actually let's go to micah 2 now actually let's go to micah 2 12 so reading micah 2 and we're going to read 12 I will surely assemble, O oh, Jacob, all of thee, I will surely gather the remnant of Israel. I will put them together as the sheep of Basra, as the flock in the midst of their fold. They shall make great noise by reason of the multitude of men. Right. So it's goes, going into salvation from Esau. Right. Basra goes into the capital of Edom. Right. So it goes in Edom. Anywhere where Edom is, Basra being the capital. I will surely assemble, O oh, Jacob, all of thee. I will surely gather the remnant of Israel. So again, it goes into the remnant. I will put them together as a sheep of Bosra. Sheep of Bosra, so they're wherever, you know, it goes into the headquarters of Edom. As the flock in the midst of their fall. Right, so they're there with, you know, under, you know, Edom. They shall make great noise by reason of the multitude of men. So that goes into uh it goes into the end end of the world as we know it now right so that goes into their salvation right let's read to the next verse the breaker is come up before them and they have broken up and have passed through the gate and are gone out of it and their king shall pass before them and the lord on the head of them right so that goes into israel's salvation via christ right so it says a remnant. So it goes, a gathered a remnant of Israel. So it's a remnant. So it's always a remnant of Israel. So let's now go into, quickly go into Baruch. So reading Baruch 3, reading from 1 to 7. So reading Baruch 3, reading from 1 to 7. O Lord, almighty God of Israel, the soul in anguish, the troubled spirit cry unto thee. Hear, O Lord, and have mercy, for thou art merciful. And have pity upon us, because we have sinned before thee. But thou endurest forever, and we perish utterly. O Lord Almighty, thou God of Israel, hear now the prayers of the deed Israelites. And of their children which have sinned before thee, not hearkened unto the voice thee, their God, for which cause these plagues cleave unto us. Remember not the iniquities of our forefathers, but think upon thy power and thy name now at this time. But thou art the Lord our God, and thee, O Lord, will we praise. For this cause thou hast put thy fear in our hearts, so the intent that we should call upon thy name and praise thee in our captivity. For we have called to, to mind all the iniquity of our forefathers that sinned before thee. Behold, we are yet this day in our captivity, where thou hast 
scattered us for a reproach and a curse and to be subject to payments according to all iniquities of our fathers which departed from the Lord our God. So it, it goes into our forefathers sinning. That's why we ended up in captivity. And then it goes into behold, we are yet this day in our captivity. We're still here in our captivity. So that continues into, into today where thou hast scattered us. You, the Lord has scattered Israel to the four corners of the earth. For a reproach and a curse, for a reproach and a curse, that we are under the curse of Moses, and to be subject to payment. So we're subject to paying bills, right? We're always paying bills. You're paying the water bill, the light bill, gas bill. You're paying your rent bill. You're paying your mortgage. You're paying all sorts of bills. Your car bill. You're paying your taxes, your house bill, your land tax. All sorts of bills you are paying. Plus, not to mention your food bill and all the rest of the bills that you have to pay. If you have a family, there's loads of other bills that you have to pay. So we're subject to payments according to all the iniquities of our father because we sinned. We went down to a lower state. Right, the Most High cursed us and put us down at a lower state, which departed from the Lord our God. So this is the reason why we ended up in our situation. Right. So I just wanted to read that to give to get a flavour of where Israel is today. Right. Uh, so where it says purge out the rebels, it literally means the Lord has blinded certain Israelites to believe what they want to believe. And he chooses a remnant who are sincere, who love him, who care about him. And he chooses to open their eyes and their ears so that they can see his truth. And then ultimately, if if, if, these, if our brothers and sisters who believe in the Lord, including myself, who love the Lord and who, who keep his commandments, keep Christ's commandments, which are God's commandments. If we honor the most high with our time our love, our strength, everything, and we take care of our brothers and sisters, the Lord promises to lift us up in that day. Brothers and sisters, I hope you are edified. Shalom.